Hello everyone! I am so excited to get back to this. It's been a second. It's actually not been that long. I'm long. I'm actually recording this earlier than I normally would. I just got really excited. So I'm recording it earlier in the week than normal and I'm kind of ahead of time and I'm just really excited to get back to it because it feels like we're getting somewhere and I still don't understand what's happening but I don't think I'm supposed to yet so let's get into it. He he he. Slowly but surely, time trekked onward, everyone working toward their own individual goals. Each early summer breeze that blew through the garden was like God's hollowed breath, carrying the flower's fragrance in through the Rose Manor's window. If only time could be stopped, and this beautiful era made to live on through eternity. As usual, Mel's eyes chased after the white-haired girl, and Nellie pursed her lips in frustration at him. But she was still rather docile. Even taking into account how self-centered she behaved, how fickle her tempo temper, Nellie's fits were still no worse than a playful kitten. See? At that very moment, our lively little feline had her claws poised to swat at the flaxen-haired young woman. <laughs> Mel, you promised me, or have you forgotten? I haven't forgotten. I'm just asking if we can go another day. Another day? This isn't something that happens every day. I've been looking forward to tonight's performance for so long. There's not. Th oh, sorry. <laughs> that's not. That's not Nelly. Okay. There's nothing I can do about that. We're having a gathering at the priest home tonight. Several high-ranking officers have come up from the mainland just for this. Who cares? I, I care. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. You know, Nellie, it doesn't have to be me who goes with you. No, I want to go with you, Mel. I definitely was a combo of those two voices there for a second. You've been so distant lately, dearest Mel. You refuse to do anything with me. That's not true. Tell me, if you can't go today, when can you? When will you be willing to go with, out with me? When will you be willing to play cards with me? To have tea together? I can't make any promises. I have things to do. Obligations. And Nelly, you're almost an adult yourself. Stop acting like such a child. I'm not an adult yet. I'm still a kid. That's right. She's 14. She's kind of a baby. If it means I don't get to play with you anymore, dearest Mel, then I don't want to be an adult. Nellie, you can't. Lady. Oh. <laughs> Lady Nellie, the, mas the master wishes to speak with you. Huh? Father does? What could he want? G go on, Nellie. You can't make father wait. He's very particular about people keeping their appointments. Yes, he is. Unlike you, dearest Mel. What's got her in such a foul mood? Oh, the maid, huh? I, I don't know why I assumed it could be a different maid than her. God, there's something in her eyes that's just so spooky. As in there's nothing in those eyes. Oh, God. Oh, thank goodness for small miracles. Nellie just won't seem to take me at my word today. You mustn't be so harsh on her. She is your one and only darling little sister. You're right, but still. She's taken it a bit too far of late. Oh, I'm not so sure. She does not seem to be behaving any differently to me. Hmm. Am I the one acting differently then? Well... Uh, enough about that. Can I ask you a favor? Me? What can I do for you? I was thinking. Physically, Mel was undeniably a young man, but the smirk that crossed his lips as he schemed gave his face the sweet look of a little boy. Or perhaps that was simply a part of his charm. And it was not the age disparity, but his character that made him smile so... Word harming. Word harming. Oh my god. Heartwarming. Sorry. I forgot how to read there for a second. What did he ask of me? <laughs> You'll soon. You shall find out soon enough. Hey, 
it's cloudy. And thank goodness for that too. Although, it would be even better if it were even darker out. Um, I believe the textile shop was around here. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, hi there. L Lord Mel. Uh, fancy meeting you here? Yeah, what a surprise. So, uh, what do you say we take this chance and go for a little walk? Since you're sensitive to the sunlight, we can keep our eyes out for shadowy areas as we go. And if you feel unwell, just let me know. Uh, um, I was sent out on to run an errand. Don't worry about that. Come on, follow me. Uh, I'm sorry. It, uh, wasn't... It actually wasn't an accident. We crossed paths. I planned this out ahead of time. Asked to have you send out on a fake errand. It feels like I'm always on alert back at the mansion. What is my cat doing right now? She's, like, trying to... Farah, please. Miss ma'am. It's not the time. They're on a date. Farah, they're on a date. Farah, please. Please get out of here. What are you doing? Sorry, my cat's being a little miscreant. <laughs> Can't relax in my own home. It's actually kind of funny. Sorry, that was inappropriate of me. I just thought since the sun's mostly blocked out, it would be alright if... Um... I'm feeling just fine. Ah! Okay. Uh, of course I get her out of the house and I can't even think of anything to say. Hey, hey, uh, yes? Have you settled into life at the mansion? I have. Everyone has been such a big help. That's good to hear. Indeed. <laughs> Got a tickle in my throat. So, uh... Yes? N Nelly told me she had you help her redecorate her room sometime back. Uh, yes. That was shortly after I arrived. What of it? Yeah, uh, that day Nelly told me that you don't... Oh! Oh! I did not think he would just mention it. Um, it's pretty brave. That's pretty brave if he can do this. It's pretty brave. Communication. We love her. N never mind. Sorry. Uh, it's not important. It is important, but I can't just ask how she feels about me. That would make it sound like I forget. To sound like I do, don't I? Lord Mel? Oh, sorry. I had something on my mind. It looks like it might rain again today. The weather usually gets better as summer approaches, not worse like it has been. It won't be a heavy storm, though. No? The wind is too gentle. You can tell from that? Vaguely, but yes. Huh. That's impressive. I often leave the house unprepared, only to find myself sloshing back in the rain. <laughs> you laugh a lot more than you used to. D do I? Yeah, and I like that. You look better with a smile on your face. A smile better suits a hero. <laughs> that line's pretty close. A smile suits Lady Nelly much more than I. What? Her smile and your smile are completely different. Also, a smile suits you as well, Lord Mel. D do you really think so? What am I supposed to do in the face of a smile like that? So, um, yes? Knowing her, if I ask if I'm imposing, she'll say no without hesitation. Trying to cover myself isn't going to get me anywhere. 
Hold on a second. I never did get you those flowers like I promised. There was a single white rose blooming in the garden. I was planning to give it to you, but it disappeared before I had the chance. Oh. So, I'd like you to have this. It's not a real rose, but it won't wilt either. I... Uh... Mel was holding an ornamental white rose. It was an impressively detailed replica of the real thing, crafted by an incredibly skilled artisan's hand. It was, I imagine, made by the same craftsman from whom Mel had ordered Nellie's birthday necklace, the young man who, but a handful of days earlier, had said he had no sweetheart, had come into commission a present for a girl. The master of the shop must have been quite surprised. Or perhaps it gave him a good laugh instead. I would bet the later. It was for this moment that he so desperately sought for time together with the white-haired girl. I don't know what you like, so I had to base it on my sister's taste. M my apologies, I, I cannot accept this. Is the design not to your liking? Uh, no, I... I just... If you're concerned about how much I paid for it, don't be. I just want you to have it, that's all. Please. Why are you so kind to me? Why? Because... I'm sorry, I can't accept it. A clear glint of fluster panic was visible in her red eyes. There is not a girl in this world whose heart would not flutter at the sight of the sparkling rose accessory but her reaction was far from delight. As a matter of fact, there were traces of fear and apprehension in her countenance. I, I beg your pardon. Hold, hold on. With a look of distress on her face, the white-haired girl made to run off, but Mel grabbed her by the arm in the nick of time. Uh, at least tell me why. Is it because you dislike me? I never said... I'm... Something's wrong with me. From the day you arrived at the mansion, it's like I haven't been myself. I've been strangely a flutter ever since then. Whenever I try to study or whether I try to read, none of it sticks. I'm just looking at pages of text, tracing rows of letters, only for them to disappear as soon as I look away. It's, it's all because of you. I, I... I truly, truly am sorry. Please, don't be any more generous than you already have. When I'm with you, my willpower wavers. What do you mean by that? I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, wait! Oh, that's some good art. Mel's grip loosened for a moment, allowing her to slip free and dart off like a gust of wind, not giving him a chance to stop her a second time. The dumb, dumb floundered, flaxen haired boy stood frozen in place, left all by himself. The breeze, which the white haired girl had called gentle earlier, felt faintly chilly almost as if mocking him. It looks like she's even less fond of me than I thought. Ugh. God, I'm crying. I'm pathetic. Aw, Mel. Well, if it isn't Mel, what might you be? Are you crying? <laughs> I'm so pitiful. Sorry you had to see this. Think nothing of it. I passed by a girl a few moments ago. She appeared to be rather distressed as well. Did something happen between the two of you? I wasn't good enough, it seems. Not good enough? That was the new maid I was telling you about before. I was... Um... Like you said, father, I was keyed on her. Quite. 
enough to bring me to tears like a miserable child. But she rejected me. I don't even know what it takes to be a stand-in prince. M Mel. I apologize for complaining to you about this. I I'm completely hopeless. Mel. Please don't try to cheer me up. I, I don't need any sympathy. I, I just... No, Mel, listen to me. What? I've seen that girl before. What do you mean? But hmm, you said she was a servant at your house, right? In which case... Y yes, she is. Uh, please tell me, Father, where did you see her? Why must you be so evasive? It was probably someone else. Someone else? You're saying you mistook someone who stands out as much as her? Father. She, and a man, I assume, is her father, paid a visit to the church once. They came asking for food, clothes, and tatters. The two were emaciated. I don't think they were eating daily. What? W wait a minute, are, are you saying... She's a beggar. But father said she came from an esteemed house. Which is why I said I might be mistaken, Mel. Is the bald man her father, maybe? Like, the bald beggar? Maybe. She has a singular aspect, but it's possible there's another girl who looks similar. Oh. Deep down, though, the priest surely believed the opposite. And so he said sternly, like teacher to a pupil, But you must be absolutely certain, Mel. Understood? You cannot proceed any further without knowing her ancestry. May I visit the church, Father? By all means. In the back of Mel's mind, a vision of the night of the storm, the night the white-haired girl arrived at the mansion, was surely replaying. She had been wearing little more than rags, and covered in grime, hardly the appearance of a respectable young lady of class. Have I been putting her through unnecessary stress? If she actually turns out to be main nameless, to be rankless, no matter where she comes from, my heart is decided. I will not fool myself about how I feel any longer. No, I cannot fool myself. But how does she feel? What will everyone else think? I have to find out why she was welcome into our house. I'll ask mother or, or father. No, if, if for some reason they don't, they don't know she isn't an aristocrat. I'm better off not saying anything. But if they don't, then does that mean she's been lying to us? And to them? I, I have to find out. This time I must get answers. Oof. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. No! Absolutely not! You'll come back and the first thing you say is that? I hate you, Father! I will not stand for this! Uh, why? Why would he just suddenly throw that on me? He didn't even ask for my opinion! No, I won't do it. I'm fine just the way things are. I I'm just fine. Dearest Mel, I need your help. I don't... I don't... want to get married. Oof. Oof. A lot of romance trouble going on right now. This may seem sudden, but I must confess that I made a grave mistake. My transgression is that I was unable to completely predict where this path we were traveling led. My hands were full of dealing with my immediate day-to-day -day tasks. So I could do naught but pray there was happiness waiting in the future. Happiness for everyone who lived within Rose Manor. But 
I am but a mere maid. There are limits to what I'm allowed to do. And furthermore, it was not my place to offer her my hand. Roads, such as the one we were following, have a way of diverging with a little warning. And if you do not turn the wheel exactly right at those sudden forks, you may end up somewhere horribly off course. I was well aware of that fact, which is why I thought that what I did was for the best. It's happening again. I made sure the door was closed, but I can sense someone standing there. Someone watching me. Footsteps. They're looking down at me. I want to open my eyes, but I can't do it. Curses. You're just gonna leave without doing anything, aren't you? Then hurry up and get out of here. Free me from this torture. No, tonight they're from my bed now. Looking down on me. My neck. Ooh. I can't speak. I can't move. Cold fingers, that soft breath. What? Why? I can move my body, but that's not important right now. Oh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Um. Smell of roses, the scent of a world far removed from ours. He made to grasp at the sight before him, only to realize he could not. The pressure of her cold fingertips wrapped around his throat robbed him almost entirely of the ability to breathe. Why? He silently mouthed the word. For that moment, at least, her melancholic, ruby eyes were focused wholly on the flaxen-haired young man. In them glowed a faint flicker of willpower and a continuously burning agitation that roused her to action. I told you to stop being so kind to me. Why? It'll all be over soon. Please don't make any noise. Why? To, to put an end to this family you are my only... Why are you shaking? Oh, hello, Rain. This is a very important moment, sir. What? Upon hearing Mel's words, the strength drained from her slender fingers. He had not been questioning why she would do such a thing. There was, of course, a trace of bewilderment visible in her eyes. But he did not shout, nor did he tremble in fear. He instead expressed concern for the young woman who looked like a concerned rabbit. A cornered rabbit, not concerned. She's not concerned. He's concerned. There's a confusion in the concerns. I am not shaking. You are. I can see it. As he slowly regained his breath, Mel's voice, too, grew clearer. Conversely, the red-eyed girl, girls grew progressively more faint and raspy. You're not doing this because you genuinely want to. There's some other reason. This, this is what I desire. Have you been to my room before? You have. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. Tell me why you're shaking. You're not putting any pressure on my neck. Why haven't you run? Because I cannot fathom why you would do this. So I'm not afraid. Do you hate me so deeply you want me dead? Do you despise me to the point you'd be willing to take my life with your own hands? No. No, I, I don't. See? Like I said, there's another reason. If it isn't because you detest me, then tell me. Why is it? I'm sorry. I'll leave your room now. I'll do my best not to bother you any further, so please forget anything ever happened. 
Do you think I'm just going to say okay and let you go? Why can't you tell me the reason? I I'm sorry. All right then, I'll try and guess. What? It has something to do with your lineage? You're troubled by it somehow? Am I right? I thought so. How? How do you, do you know about that? The priest at the church told me he'd seen you before. He also told me, um, a little about your origin. But that's all I know. The only difference between us is social rank. I don't know what would cause you to do this. Please tell me who you really are. Tell me why you came to this mansion and why father allowed you to be a maid. I haven't said anything to mother or father. If you're hiding the truth from them, they still don't know. But I want to. I... I won't get mad at you or have you punished. I'll even swear to God if you'd like. I... I want to be the prince who whisks Sue away. I want to be like the prince who rescued the girl from the dark mansion and showed her the world. I know I'm not that dependable, but... I want to help you. Why do you show me such compassion? Why do you treat me like this? I have my hand around your neck! Why? I thought it'd be obvious. Or have I not expressed myself well enough? I... I love you. Every time you push away, it crushes me. I didn't even know my heart could feel such distress. If you dislike me, and don't want to be with me, then well... I'll just have to live with that. As much as it may hurt. But if you have some other reason, some weight on your shoulders, that you can't share with anyone else, tell me. I want to help you. There are other options. Things we can do about your... No, no that's... That's not it. Huh? I've tried to hate you so many times. And yes, there is more to it than just social status. But I can't do it. I couldn't make myself do it. What do you mean? I had so many chances, but I couldn't do anything. She spoke in a stifled voice, as if every word had to fight to escape her lips. She appeared so fragile, so precarious, looking down on him, that it seemed as though if a gust of wind were to whisk through the room, it would blow her away completely. Her pale fingers were trembling, like she had tried to squeeze them again and failed. However, her hand did not pull away from his still, slender neck. Her hand was so cold. He did not challenge her, but simply kept his eyes affixed on hers, as if carefully watching to see what she would do next. I'll say it as many times as I must. I love you, and I wouldn't be able to accept losing you without knowing anything. So please tell me the reason. I'll see to it that you're taken care of. Those... <clears throat> that is not him. Those are the words of a man of means, Lord Mel. Of someone blessed enough to have pity for others. You are a foolish young man. You know nothing. But the greatest fool of all is myself. If you agree to punish me, I'll talk. Tell me. Her long, white hair and his soft, flaxen hair touched. For just the briefest of moments, it appeared in the darkness, as though they had fused together. The white-haired girl, finally having gathered the courage, began to slowly tell her tale. On the night of the storm, I paid a visit to Rose Manor, this mansion. My father and I were always on the move, traveling across the land by foot, so it was only recently that we heard rumors of Rose Manor. There are several reasons why we can't stay in one place. First, is my unusual appearance. 
People often find the color of my skin or eyes disconcerting. So, after living in one place for long enough, unsettling rumors would begin to spread, forcing us to leave. What kind of rumors? What kind of rumors? Was it like that she's a vampire? Because she looks kind of vampire-y. I'm so curious. I mean, she genuinely just might be a vampire, actually. I know I said ghost before, but... Vampire is honestly a little more likely, I'd say. Another reason was my father's line of work. He painted pictures for a living. I'm trying to think if we've seen pictures anywhere. But he had trouble finding a patron, so he had to work day to day. When he was no longer able to find work in a city, we would move. We were birds that migrated without a flock. When we arrived at this town, my father was exhausted and weak. That's when we finally learned of Rose Manor and the family who dwelled within it. Rhodes is a name my father could never forget. He was long ago a painter. Oh! <gasps> oh, the picture of the siblings! Oh, frick! Okay. There was a reason it focused on that. Okay, okay, okay. He was long ago a painter in service of the Rhodes family. Oh, hold on. Your father was an artist here? Yes. It was before I was born. Oh, maybe it wasn't the siblings. I think it was still, but maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. It was before you were, I was born, so you probably don't remember Lord Mel. Oh, no, 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 no. I think she's younger than him. So you knew about us before you came here? As far as I can remember. As long as I can remember. I've known the name Rhodes. My father was chased from your house just because they didn't like something he painted. Having failed the Rhodes family, no one would become his patron. Just as a good reputation spreads, so too does a bad one. Brandon once is a failure, and no one will take you ever again. You nobles through throw your parties and spread your gossip about this painter or that sculptor. The rose you tried to give me is an example of that. It was certainly crafted with skill, but the jeweler is only known because some aristocrat spoke highly of him. My father's paintings were no less skillful. His was a talent that could not be as easily imitated. But no one was willing to separate the art from the artist. The Rhodes family stole everything from my father. But even thrown out onto the streets, his only skill was painting. That was all he could do to earn a living. What little money we had for food he gave to me. He did anything he could to ensure my survival, even at the expense of his own well-being. My father passed away in this town. Up until his last breath, he was only ever concerned about me. He held me in his arms, ran his fingers through my hair, an apologetic look on his face. If I had a normal appearance, sure life would have been much easier. He was always telling me how sorry he was for making life so hard, even though it's not his fault I look like this. I disdain the Rhodes family for putting us, no, for putting my father through such hardship. I imagine you are still living in decadence, acting as though nothing had ever happened. No, you wouldn't even care about the fate of one simple painter. Our lives meant nothing to you, and so I sought to bring misfortune upon you. That's why you tried to kill me. In truth, I had wanted to take the master's life, but your father spent so much time outside the mansion. And so, you're right. If they lost me, it would put my family in a very difficult position. That is the whole of my tale. You now know about my father, and how I feel about you. Having, having told you the blackness in my heart, I cannot go on living like nothing has changed. Please, give me punishment. Why? Why would you have me put the one I love through any more misery? 
Is that his hand? I've been wondering that. I thought that was hers, but... Not only because I'm not aristocratic, but because every time I spoke with you, I did so holding this darkness in my heart. That's definitely his hand, also. That's 100% his hand. Does that not unnerve you? In the end, it was my family's actions that caused you so much suffering. With that your father were still alive, perhaps I could have done something. I'm sorry. And besides, you hesitated and didn't actually kill me. What am I even to punish you for? As you said, you had countless opportunities, but you could not bring yourself to do it. Tell me, why couldn't you kill me? Because I... If it's because I've given you enough reason to have even the slightest bit of interest in me, nothing was as I envisioned it. What? I assumed the residents of Rose Manor would be cold. People who believed that wealth and rank mattered above all. But on the night of the storm, the mistress was the first one to extend her hand to me. I arrived at the mansion disguised as a beggar. Actually, disguised is not the right word. As many nights, I only, dis I only survived on the generosity of others. The mistress did not send me away when she saw me. Quite the opposite. She took me in as a servant. So that was Mother's doing. I could scarcely believe she would invite a stranger into her home. That she would treat a stranger with such compassion. I thought perhaps she knew who my father was. But I had never met any of you before. So she must simply be that kind-hearted a woman. And the mistress continued to treat me with kindness, despite my disquieting appearance and the darkness in my heart. In time, I began to grow less and less sure of myself. Was what I meant to do truly right? Were the things I felt truly justified? But it was a certain fact that my father was here, and that he had been chased out. So I decided I should take your life, to put an end to everything, before I wavered any further. And then... And then... And then... You... You were too kind to me. It's all your fault. Because you laugh with such affection. Because you gave, give me smiles like that. Because you say the things you say. You... I'm sorry. No, no, don't, don't apologize. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that, despite uh, the unusual circumstances. Please don't say you want to leave. Don't ask me to punish you. I couldn't do anything for your father, but at least allow me to do something for the daughter he cared for so dearly. You are far too kind-hearted. I'll be happier with you around. You can become a real aristocrat. Huh? There are families that would be willing to adopt you. Especially knowing it would bring them ties to the Rhodes family in the near future. Are you saying, um... As long as you're okay with it, of course. Oh my god, Ma like, he just said he liked her, now he's going for marriage. I guess it's ye olden times, like, this is, this makes sense. I, I don't understand how you could possibly say that. I have my hand around your neck even as we speak. It seems reasonable enough to me. I'm desperately looking for some way to not have to lose you. I couldn't. I don't know any etiquette or social customs. How could I? You can learn all of that. You're pretty and naturally graceful. You'll do just fine. Um. You are such an aristocrat, Lord Mel. Oh, the way you can come up with compliments so easily. 
On only for you. Nelly says my poetry has as much charm as a dissertation. I don't understand theater. It puts me to sleep. <laughs> you laughed. Thank goodness. Ah. Keep smiling. You don't have to stop. A smile on your face is a smile on mine. No matter how deep the darkness has taken root in your heart, it can always be removed. I believe people are capable of forging their own futures. I... What do you say we go to the theater sometime? I promise I won't sleep through it. At the private theater, we can get seats at the far end of the second floor so we don't have to stand. They would be pretty lavish seats, and it would give you a chance to experience the noble life. But please, don't be shy. I can have clothes prepared for you. I'll ask one of the maids who can keep a secret. Say, the one with black hair? She kind of scares me, though. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. How could you show such compassion for me? I tried to inflict harm upon you. Am I allowed to feel such joy? For every day you suffered, a day of happiness. That's how it shall be. So stand by my side. He softly whispered the girl's name. For several long moments, her lips trembled in trepidation. But in time, she squeezed them together and made a smile. He wrapped her hands, or sorry, he wrapped his arms around her unbelievably slender, frail frame, holding her tight in an affectionate embrace. Mel approached me the next day. He explained to me the course of events, and then asked me to dress her up more beautifully than any other noble girl had ever been. She was already a very pretty girl, so... Even without much effort on my part, simply putting her in a dress, she radiated beauty. I was quite partial to her smile, so I agreed to help, thinking that if it would lead to their happiness, I could not ask for anything more. I know this is not where this is ending. This would be such a nice ending right here. Just right here. Cinderella moment, you know? But God do I know this is not where this is ending. I mean, I don't know, but this most certainly um, has some trauma aspects to it. So I just know this is not where this is at. Like, we're not even close to done with the game. I already know. I never anticipated what would happen next, though. Ah, <laughs> okay. Perhaps my hopes were unreasonable after all. Good. Well, hopefully we see her in the dress, right? Maybe? I need to look at the symbol for the for the loading screen in the bottom. I need to see if I see that. Because it looks like there is, I don't know. There's like cog wheels going on. But I want to like ana analyze it in a second. Now, now, Nelly. You love the theater, so don't look so cross. <laughs> Nelly was out with a man other than her brother that evening. A rare sight indeed. And she was quite clearly in a foul mood. I will not stand for this. I, that I should have to marry a man as disagreeable as Arthur. It's unthinkable. The young man at her side was Nellie's fiance, selected by her parents. On any other occasion, she would have snubbed an invitation from any man who was not Mel. But she had little say in this matter. She was, for lack of a better word, forced to go out with him. And oh, how furiously she had fought against it. She had shoved against the Abigail, trying to fasten her corset, locked herself in her room, and sobbed for quite some time. It required the combined efforts of several of us to get her ready and out the door for her date. Come now, you should at least pretend you're enjoying yourself. Or do you want people to think we don't get along? Do we get along? Well, I want to, for what it's worth. What it's worth to you is my name, not me. Are you really going to be like that? I went out of my way to take you to your favorite play. 
the least you could do is be a little kinder to me. What was it called? Romeo and Juliet? It's been running for six or seven years now. A family like yours or mine could pay to have a brand new script written. So why should we have to see an old play at a theater full of commoners? It may be private, but even so, ugh. I would rather just have a show put on in my state. Stop talking already! Why should I... Why should I have to marry someone like you? I have absolutely no desire to marry you. Whatever it takes, I will put a stop to this. I'll talk to Father as many times as I must. Please don't make such a scene. It's shameful. There are people around, remember? You represent your family. Besides, our families are hardly strangers to one another. Try as you might, I doubt you can get rid of me. No matter what you say, you can't break this engagement. You don't... Your parents gave you too much freedom. And look at what a spoiled little girl you became because of it. God, he sucks, dude. Goodness, you're gonna be such a handful. Oh, get off your high horse. No, you're the one on a high horse, Nelly. You are going to be my wife. You could at least put some effort into liking me. What happens when I take you to social engagements and you act like this? It's shameful to the both of us. This coming from someone who used to call me Lady Nelly? What's your problem? When you choose to act like a lady, I'll gladly call you that again. Goodness gracious. Put yourself in my shoes for a second. I have to marry a bratty little girl because it'll help my family. Oh my god, they're like extreme opposites right now. This is ridiculous. How dare you talk to me that way? You're not a damned princess. Open your eyes. If you think talking to your father will get you out of this marriage, you're welcome to try. I doubt he'll have it, though. Otherwise, you can go complain about it to your friends. Oh, that's right. As far as I'm aware, you don't have any friends. Enough! As you wish. This is so frustrating. Why should I have to listen to this jerk mock me? I have Mel. I know. If father won't listen to me, I'll ask Mel to talk to him. Mel will be able to convince him. Come on now, your favorite play is about to start. Maybe you should face forward. Enjoy it while it lasts. You won't be talking down to me much longer. Oh, poor Nelly. What? Is that? Wait, Nelly! Get back here! What is that damn child's problem? I didn't give her permission to leave. Father will be sure to hear about this. I cannot have the roads making any more of a fool out of me. Um, I... You're fine. Don't be shy. Oh, she looks cute! But... So many people are looking at me. <laughs> That's because you're gorgeous. No, it's because I look strange. I assure you, that's not the case. It is true you have an unusual appearance, but right now the unique color of your hair, your skin, and your eyes all serve to accentuate your beauty. You sound like a prince, Lord Mel. What? You think so? <laughs> I mean, I did say I'd be a stand-in prince for you, but... I think you're a wonderful prince, not just a stand-in. Which makes you my princess, then? I don't... <laughs> You're supposed to say yes I am, Bear. You're going to make me sad. Ah, uh, um... I... <laughs> I guess I'll have to keep working at it until you submit. I didn't like that sentence. <laughs> I didn't like that sentence. I know what he means, but I didn't like that sentence, I gotta say. Oh, God. Oh, hey! The play's about to start. Um, what am I supposed to be doing? Nothing in particular. Just sit back and enjoy the show. Oh, but there is one thing. Yes? If I start dozing off, could you maybe wake me up? <laughs> ah! Dearest Mel! Oh, 
N Nelly? Dearest Mel, why are you... What are you doing here? I... I... I asked her to join me. It's nothing to get worked up over. It is! It absolutely is! How many times did I ask you to come with me and you wouldn't? Oh yeah, he literally did this just yesterday, didn't he? Ooh, mm -hmm. You don't even like theater, dear Smell, and you brought her? You're right. I'm not especially fond of plays, but I wanted her to be able to see one. Why are you making such a big deal out of this, Nelly? She's not suitable for you. What? She isn't good enough for you. Why would you choose her? She's creepy, and you have no idea where she came from. Oh, God. Don't talk about her like that, Nelly. What? You don't even know who her family is. I do. What? Um, Lord Nell? It's fine. You just stay quiet. Like the other maids, she comes from a respectable house. I looked into it. However, circumstances prevent me from telling you what house that is. No, you're lying! That can't be! She's... But she... She doesn't act like a lady! She lacks etiquette and she probably can't even dance! You expect me to believe someone like her is from a good house? Enough already, Nelly. Mel, yelled at me? You have my word. You don't have to worry about her. So please stay out of this, Nelly. It isn't any of your business if I spend time with her, is it? But, but dear Smell. Oh. You need to stop hanging all over me, Nelly, and find someone for. Wait. What are you doing at the theater? Are you here alone? Ah. Uh, oh, yes, dear Smell, about that. I, I have a favor to ask of you. I've been wanting. I've been waiting to talk to you about this since yesterday, but I haven't seen you at all. Settle down, Nellie. What is it? Father had me engaged without consulting me. And he picked Arthur, the disagreeable little... Oh, right, that. I already know. Oh. Oh, he knows. Oh, Frick, he doesn't care. Oh, God. What? I heard it from Father. It reminds me, you didn't show up at breakfast this morning. I see now. It was because of your engagement. Dearest Mel. Is that who you're with today? In that case, you should get back to him, rather than waste any more time with us. You knew I didn't want to get married, Mel, so why? Why didn't you talk father out of it? Because it's your time, Nelly. If there's someone else you'd rather be with, then, well, you can try persuading father, but... You're, you're the only prince for me, dearest Mel. And a prince always grants his princess's wishes! Doesn't he? I just want you to say you'll do that for me, dearest Mel! Lady... Nelly... You stay out of this! It's all your fault! It's all because you showed up and played your little tricks on him! I warned you about this rat, dearest Mel! She's not suitable for... I told you I'd had enough already. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. He slapped her. Oh my god. Mel. What the hell? Oh, I kind of feel bad for Nelly. I know she's being a little bit of a brat. I know she's being like mean to. Do we know her name? We don't know her name. Wait a second. Do we? Why don't we know her name? Wait. <laughs> He's known her for so long. He's like proposed marriage to her. He does not know her name and neither do we. Wait. Why don't we know her name? <laughs> what? Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, wow. Anyway, I kind of feel for Nelly. Like, this kind of sucks. Like, I mean... I wouldn't want to get forced into a marriage. I know it's like her obligation or whatever back now, back in the day as a, a noble lady to like be married off and stuff. But still, like, frick, I feel for her. Arthur sucks too. Like, that's completely opposite to her personality. Like, I'm sure there are better people, but like... Mel's kind of in his own like world right now. And, like, he's kind of going through it, so I, like, can't entirely blame him. I'm saying, like, a lot, sorry. Um, I can't entirely blame him, but... 
don't know. This kind of sucks. I feel for Nelly. Also, this is white-haired girl, whatever her freaking name is. This is not looking great for this. Really, I don't know. I don't trust a man that's slapping a lady, especially in public right now. Like, ooh, well, private's not better, but I don't trust. I don't. <laughs> Some red flags going off in my head. With the bravery to, to slap your sister in the middle of a theater. Like, she's being a frick right now. But also, like, she's 14. Dude, she's 14. How much longer are you going to continue acting like a child? I can deal with you being a spoiled little girl, but how dare you der be so der der derisive to someone else? Nell, hit me. Lord, Nell. Go on. The show's about to start. People are giving us dirty looks. Return to your betrothed now. Betrothed, whatever. I'll apologize to him after as, we're, as well. You said you'd always be my... You said you'd always be by my side. And you would always be my prince. The time for make-believe is past Nelly. No. No! I refuse to believe it! I will not have it! Nelly! Goodness, that girl. Are you not going after her, Lord Amel? Kind of switched into Nellie's voice there a little bit. No, just let her go. The only place she even has to go is home. I just wish she'd start acting a little more like an adult. I imagine Lady Nellie simply... Hmm? She what? No, say it. Say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. Oh my god, white-haired girl, say it. Whoever you are. God, what is your name? No, it wasn't my intention to get between you. Don't blame yourself. It's not your fault we had an argument. But you two were so close. Well, yeah, we're siblings, so we're close, but nothing more. I do care about Nellie, and I enjoy spending time with her, but she's my sister, nothing more. She can be your friend, too. It's a little weird that the nothing more is keep being added. Anyway, sorry for making such a scene. No, I... I imagine she left her betro betrothed... Why do I keep saying betrothed? <laughs> Putting an H there. Behind without saying anything, so I'm going to go apologize to him. We have to keep up appearances. Stay here. I'll be right back. Very well. I don't like this. I'm not comfortable with the situation, I'll have to say. This isn't making me comfortable. Where did the, oh, that accent went like five different ways. Okay. Master, what are your thoughts on the tale so far? Which of the siblings do you think was in the right, Master? The brother or the sister? I think they were both wrong. But I feel like, honestly, okay, again, Nelly was being like mean, right? But I think I'm more on Nelly's side right now. Is that controversial? I don't know, what do you guys think? Whose side are you on? No spoilers, obviously, but like, I don't know. Okay, 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 hear me out, hear me out. So, Nellie was being definitely mean for the sake of it, right? Because she was jealous and upset and felt betrayed, but she stated to her, like, I can see where Nellie's feeling right now and put myself in her shoes. Like, she's been trying to hang out with her brother for the past, like, week or so he wouldn't go with her he finally went with a white-haired girl whoever she is my god what is her name anyway finally went with her right um wasn't really caring about his sister much which is like he's going through stuff so like i get that right but i can see where she would feel betrayed because the one person she thought she could trust wasn't there for her at all wasn't thinking about her and while she was being mean, bratty, immature, she's also 14, so it's like, whatever, right? I don't know. And he was horrible to her. I don't know. And her in her in her shoes, I'd be a little pissed too. I get it. Um, I don't think she should be as mean to whoever white-haired girl is, whatever her name is. But. I don't think he should have hit her, for one. That's extreme. Like, she was being a jerk, but... That's extreme. Whatever. That's my opinion. What do you guys think? No spoilers. Again. 
Oh, my apologies. I... Oh, oh my. I apologize for the abrupt question. Did I startle you? What do you... What do I think? Hmm, yes. I believe Mel was probably right. Oh! Not on my side. He was also surely happier than her. As Mel had anticipated, Nellie fled from the theater, leaving her fiancé behind. I don't know. I just don't think... I don't know. I feel for women in this time. I would hate to be forced to marry um, someone just to continue my noble lineage, you know? But I guess, I mean, you got the perks of being a noble and, like, money, which is nice. But... I don't want to be a baby maker. That's all she is, you know? She just something that people give their, like, freaking emerald mines to get, you know? But whatever. She forced her way into a carriage stopped outside, probably one called for a different nobleman, and ordered it to take her home. Mel's assumption was correct. The only place she had to return to was the mansion. The sun was beginning to set, and as a young lady, she could not simply go wandering through town alone. Nor did she have any acquaintances to take her in. Also, she has, like, no friends! That sucks! Like, Mel is really the only one there for her. I don't know. I feel for Nelly. Unpopular opinion, maybe. She didn't- sh being mean. Being very mean. But, like, I still feel for her. Frick. Maybe- Maybe it's just like, oh god, I'm just like- I was a 14-year-old girl once, Frick. <laughs> I was dumb and mean sometimes. But, like, I would still hate those. Her world was, in essence, composed of two elements, her brother and the Rose Garden. They were the light of her life at Rose Manor. She lived a very isolated existence. Oh. <laughs> when she escaped back home, Nellie went straight to her room, locked the door, and began sobbing. The waves of her sorrow came crashing effortlessly over the leaves. The tears streamed down through the cracks, cracked walls of the dams blocking her tear ducts. <laughs> Why? Why? Why won't you help me, Mel? Why would you take my side? The decor in her room appeared blurry through her damp eyes. Memories of the day she had redecorated it played back in her mind with crystal clarity. She told me she had no feelings for you! That liar! That liar! She let her emotions run wild, breaking glass craftworks, silver plates designed by famous foreign artisans, flower vases, all sorts of things. It was as though a beast had been set loose in her bedchamber. The vase she tossed shattered against a painting hanging on the wall, spraying water, porcelain, and roses in every direction. It was the portrait she adored so dearly of her and her brother. Uh -uh. And in what happened to her, like a metaphor for her life, the frame fell off its mountain and came crashing to the floor. Nellie darted over and scooped it up, the frame had broken, but the painting inside was unharmed. The two smiling children were still the very image of happiness, inseparable siblings, gently holding one another's hand. My princess, no more. Though in her present state of mind, that image of happiness brought her nothing but misery. And the worse she felt, the more frustrated she grew at the smiling girl and kind boy of her past. The princess is no more either. You're not a princess anymore, Nellie. Some other woman has taken your place. I trusted you, Mel. I believed you would always be there for me. This painting is nothing but a lie. That's not the real Mel. That's not the real me. It's all a big fat lie! Oh my. <laughs> I wish this painting never existed. That it was never made. That I never had a brother. This painting. This painting. 
In a fit of emotional distress. <laughs> it's taken a lot out of me. <laughs> she scratched feverishly at the painting she once considered precious. She put more force into her fingers than she, or perhaps anyone, might have imagined she could. Flakes of paint began falling off the canvas, and in time, she noticed something peculiar. Oh, there's a painting under the painting, isn't there? Huh? What is this writing? Something hidden beneath the painting? Just a little more. A date? Why would that be hidden? What could it be for? Completed? Completed May 1587. 1587. She read aloud the faded, scratched up handwriting. Is that before or after this? I'm. I'm starting to feel like this is after the date. After staring blankly at the text for some time, the color in her face began to drain. What is this? H how. How could this have been painted 16 years? What? 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 How could this have been painted 16 years ago? I, I wasn't even born yet then, and Mel would have just been a baby. Is this not me? Is this not Mel? There's still more writing. Urged on by her rapidly pounding heart, Nellie furiously scratched away at the painting, even as her clean, pink fingernails were soiled with fragments of paint and blood. She did not stop. She was so overwhelmed by trepidation that she could not stop. She had a horrible premonition that something was about to happen, something indescribable, incomprehensible. This is, this is how I envision your son and our un and daughter might look several years from now. Her son and our unborn daughter. So this was painting of the future. Then it really is of me and Mel. No, use your head, stupid. I'm only 14. 16 years ago, I would not have even been inside mother. But then, but then who is this? Who is that holding Mel's hand? Who is that with my brother? M more, there has to be... Go. Found it. There's more writing. I have to know what this is. Calm down. Calm down, Nellie. It's nothing to get worked up over. I I'm sure it's nothing. This was painted by her father, and that's why he was kicked out. I don't entirely... understand everything yet, but I have a feeling that's what happened. Calm down and read. There's nothing to worry about. If, if our unborn child... This is what the writing on the painting said. If our unborn child does not have your hair color, then you will probably not be able to take her in as your own. I will be pun... I will be punished and my life made miserable. And so I pray that this child might have flaxen hair. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, is white-haired girl his sister? Oh my god, is that their sibling? Oh my god, is the mom- Oh my god, did the mom cheat on the dad? With the painter? Oh no. Oh no. Though, is it a sin to wish she had, she has, in her a trace of me? Oh my god, is this like, oh my god, is this like Star Wars? Jesus Christ! Oh no, oh no, Mel! Oh god, Nelly! Oh god, white-haired girl! Oh god! I do hope it is a girl. What, what am I eating? I don't get it. Someone tell me, what does this mean? Painting from 16 years ago. Hair color. Sin. I do hope it is a girl.
Oh my god. Well, she's noble, that's for sure. Oh god. Yes? It's Nellie. Let me in. Lady Nellie? I think we'll end there. I think I think I have to end there. Because I'm so invested that if I don't stop now, like I won't. Let me save. Oh my god. 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 I know it's not confirmed yet, but I'm so sure that's what they Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no, he's in love with his sister. Oh no, 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 I was talking- Oh no, I jinxed it at the beginning when I said, oh god, I hope this isn't going this direction. I didn't- Oh god. Does she know? There's no- There's no way white-haired girl knows. Oh my god. But the mom knows. The mom for sure knows. She took- She took her in real quick. Oh, God. Oh, God. I... Oh, my God. I really want to keep playing. I have to stop. I have to stop. Thank you guys for watching. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All my socials are down below, I guess. Comment and like, whatever. Oh, my God. Thank you for watching. Okay. All right. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God.